everyone. I hope you are all doing very well. Welcome to this week's Grow Wealthy Grooming. I am your host, River Lee. I am the founder of The Savvy Groomer. Um, go ahead, guys, and either like or go ahead and post in the comments if you guys can hear me. I am streaming over YouTube as well as Facebook, and I've been playing a little bit, and I just want to make sure that you guys are all set. Um, it looks good from my end, but I would just love to know from you guys that it's working on your end. And thank you so much for being so patient. I know sometimes it can get really frustrating, but I really appreciate you guys. I uh, see that really quiet. Let me try and move. Is that better or is that still really quiet? I'm hoping this is not going to be... Whoop, that might be a text message. You can hear it? Perfect. I appreciate you guys being patient with me. It's always a work in progress. We're always getting better. It's like, yes! You know, small steps, right? So for those of you guys that don't know me, my name is River Lee. I'm the founder of The Savvy Groomer. I've been in the pet industry many years. We don't want to name dates because at this point it just makes me feel old um you know it's like when I figured out my son was nine hmm and you guys have trouble hearing me let me know I'm gonna try and project my voice a little bit um you know just let me know guys because what I can do is I can just move I'm losing so just let me know if it's still quiet okay and if you are let me know if the volume's quiet for you as well. Like I said, I'm just gonna project my voice. Hopefully that will help. It might make my voice squeak, but you guys know. Uh, so yeah, so welcome to Grow Wealthy Grooming, guys. This week's topic is going to be um, kind of a fun one. <laughs> roles before. Um, they're called different things in different, you know, different, um, you know, different companies. Like I always talk about the book, The E-Myth, that'll change your life, as well as Tony Robbins. He talks about all three of these roles. Oh, hang on one second. I know I have the three. To, there we go. So the three roles that you're going to be juggling in your business are going to be the artist or the technician, the manager, and they are the entrepreneur. Let's get that. Boop. So in each of these roles, you're going to have different attributes as well as different roles. That said, you're also going to find yourself leaning in a direction of one of them. And I think it's really important for you to acknowledge what you naturally lean towards because the, the ultimate goal is to either outsource or grow skills and the other thing. But knowing what really makes you happy is going to make your business a lot better. As somebody who really doesn't enjoy grooming as much as I do growing businesses, hence my love of being a business coach, I find it really hard to sit there and do nothing but grooming. Now, I was able to make my business around what makes me happy. You know, I really wasn't that happy in my shop. And it was, it was interesting. So let me just have a little story time and, you know, let me know if you guys have any trouble hearing me or anything like that. So for those of you guys that don't know, I owned a salon and we did an average of 40 dogs a day. We had five employees. We had a dog coming in about every 15 minutes. We also had a membership model. So people could pay one flat fee and they had so many appointments and they were able to come in. So I had a receptionist who handled all that. I had bathers and I had groomers. And so we all worked as a team. And as much as I loved that, you know, Basically, as I continue to grow that business, I went through all of these roles. The first role is the artist or the technician. So the artist or technician in the grooming industry is obviously the groomer. 
Now, I don't use these terms interchangeably. In the EMIT, they call it the technician, and in Tony Robbins, they call it the artist. Now, what are these roles? The artist is the groomer who wants to keep dogs long and fluffy. They're the person that is pushing for certification, not because they want to be better or make it more marketable. It's because they really enjoy breed standard cuts. They're the kind of person convincing people to keep their dogs longer. They want a poodle, you know, poodles. They want to hand scissor dogs. They're that kind of groomer. And we all know those people. Um, personally, I've always been more of a technician and a technician is really more about hygiene and making the pet comfortable. Now, the artist is not sitting there doing things generally that are unhealthy for the dog. There are some artist style groomers who will demat anything, even if it's not the, in the best interest of the pet. And we all know that person. Now, for those of you guys that don't know, my superpower is I can demat anything. I don't know why, but I can demat anything. I can deshed anything. You give it to me, I will save the coat. I will save it without ruining its integrity. That is just a skill that I have. You know, maybe it's because my first mentorship when I got out of grooming school was at a groomer who literally only did, you know, standard poodles for the most part and hand strip schnauzers. Her poodles were all hand scissored and they always came in disgusting and matted. Maybe that's why, I don't know. But, you know, artists tend to be all about making things look pretty and learning the skills about how to better the industry. Like they're the groomer that even during a shave down will make the legs fluffy. For me as a technician, I've always been, you know, I love five stripping a dog. You give me five strip Shih Tzus all day, I'm happy as a clam. Now that skill set also lent it really well when I went into cat grooming. Because cat grooming for me was mainly baths and blow dries, which I really enjoy. I really enjoy like a, which sounds really crazy when I say it out loud. It's because I'm not doing it every day. Like I love me a once a year shepherd. I love me a um, once a year husky. It's so satisfying to take that disgusting dog and make it beautiful. Hey, Peter, good to see you. And I don't know why, but that just makes me really happy. Now, if I was doing that every day, I think I would go bananas, but I don't. So, so the technician is somebody who, for the most part, wants to do more simple things. It's about having the expertise, but choosing to do not the least amount of work, but it's, it comes from a place of solving a problem. So again, the artist is somebody who wants to make art and that's what their job is. Um, you also will find these people, um, you know, these are generally people that are going to co grooming competitions. They're obviously the creatives, which are beautiful and wonderful. We need those people in our industry. We need them. Um, and you have more of the technician and that's somebody like me who just prefers to get the pet clean. And, you know, I would, I bought a standard poodle for a pet and I don't groom my standard poodle. Why? Because... I don't want to be grooming. I don't want to do clean feet, clean face on my dog. I don't want to do that. I don't want to hand scissor her. I want to five strip her and be done with it. So, you know, and knowing who you are is going to really help with your business model. Um, and again, going back to my salon, I owned a shop within walking uh, distance, Mario Defante, who is a grooming judge. He is a master. And by knowing myself as a technician, and again, I didn't know these terms, but it was pretty self-aware. I was able to say, I don't want to do these haircuts. I don't want to do a real Bichon cut. I don't want to do a breed standard Cocker Spaniel. I don't want these customers. And I'm going to send them to Mario because there's no way I'm ever going to make them as happy as him. And so learning to refer them out instead of, being unhappy created a much better business for me because I was able to do that. And on the flip side, I knew what I was really good at and what I was really happy with. And that was we owned a holistic salon. We were very green and we focused on customer service. So my business model was around the membership being green as well as making customers happy. And again, it wasn't that he didn't make customers happy, but 
we just did it in different ways. And I was okay with that. So knowing which one you are naturally is gonna help you. Because when I found that when I hired artists, I was really unhappy. Because I was like, we gotta go. Like we got shit to do, we gotta go, go, go. And it wasn't that I was trying to rush them, it's that it was more important to them to demat and scissor up some legs when my customers didn't care. My customers didn't care. And it wasn't about doing more dogs. It was about the fact that as a business owner who was a technician, I felt like, why are you wasting all of this time? And so knowing what you naturally are, guys, is so important because when you hire people, you, you're gonna wanna make sure it's on brand. You know, when I hired artists, I got really frustrated with them and it wasn't their fault. I wasn't respecting their personality types. And my customers didn't value their skill set, which made them feel really crappy. You know, they spent an extra 20, 30 minutes scissoring a dog. My customers didn't give a crap. They were like, whatever. I would have liked it if you just five stripped it and been done with it. And it wasn't that I had offered bad haircuts, but you and I both know that there's a lot, we notice, we notice the difference. If you spend an extra 20, 30 minutes on a dog, a lot of customers don't, especially not my customers. They didn't care. They wanted the dog clean and comfortable and they wanted to be warm and welcome with consistency. And the haircut was one of the few things that, yes, they wanted a good haircut, but a good and a great haircut to a lot of customers is really splitting hairs. You know, I, I feel the same way. Like I'm in Rhode Island, you know, I am Italian. You may not know good Italian food like I do. Like I know what handmade fresh pasta looks like. But if you've never grown up on that or if you were never in an area that was commonplace, you know, you may go to Olive Garden and think you're getting great Italian. So, you know, and there's stuff in between. You may, you may think you're getting homemade pasta and I can tell what is a great pasta versus a good pasta, if that makes any sense. So again, knowing which one is important for both your sanity as a business owner and for your brand. Now, as my business grew, I needed to hire more groomers. And now I'm, then I was stepping into a manager role, which is our second you know, role. Now, this it could be a manager or a leader. I prefer manager. Um, a lot of groomers pretend to be leaders, but the problem becomes that when you are leading a groomer group, because you're not leading a team in a, in a lot of salons, there has to be somebody in charge of quality control. So if you're the kind of person that wants to lead your shop, but not actually train your employees and double check quality, you're going to have problems. Unless if you have people that are there for five, 10, 15 years, you're going to have to double check their work. Why? Because people are, people are imperfect. People, you know, we make mistakes. We're only humans. I always use the example of the day before Thanksgiving, one year when I had my shop, and I completely forgot an entire leg on a dog. I was just, we were just going, 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 and I had a way of doing things. And for whatever reason, that last back leg, I just completely forgot. And at the time, we didn't have anyone double checking dogs. So I go to bring the dog out and I'm like, ah, can you just one minute, please? I put the dog back on the table and I'm doing that leg. And it was horribly embarrassing. But that's what happens is we're only human. I was just like, I can't believe I completely forgot to finish that dog's leg. No, it had been shaved, but it hadn't been scissored up. It hadn't been finished. And so, you know, maybe the customer wouldn't have noticed or cared, but I cared. So again, the manager is going to check quality control, make sure the day runs well, pick up the slack when groomers need help. If they need help, if they need an extra bather, if they need you know, towels, whatever they need. That is the manager's role in the salon. The manager's job is to make sure the day runs well. Now, you either enjoy this role or you do not. Um, and you can in different seasons of your life. As somebody who really at first enjoyed it, 
I really enjoyed the role of manager because I didn't want to groom all day. I enjoyed managing more than I enjoyed grooming all day. Not that I disliked grooming, but at the time I didn't have the knowledge I have now. And I was grooming a lot of dogs. I was grooming a lot of big dogs and my body hurt. Um, and so for me, that was really tough, but managing was fun. I enjoyed being the maestro of my business, making sure that everything was going well, training my staff. I really enjoyed that. I was very good at that. Um, I definitely had a lot more to learn as far as how to create loyalty. And, you know, what's been beautiful is that since I sold my that business, I've learned a lot more outside of the grooming industry because there's not a lot that we actually get trained on how to have employees. Now, if you guys are not already signed up, I would highly suggest that you guys consider signing up for the Badass Cat Conference. I'm gonna actually be one of the speakers. And Melissa Hall, who is absolutely amazing, she is a second generation grooming salon owner and she has a fantastic business model on employees. She'll actually be speaking in that. I would highly recommend that you take her class, that way you can learn more about how to have employees if you don't already, not only creating loyalty in employees, but also pay scales and things like that. She's absolutely phenomenal. I'm really excited about that. But moving on, what I found, and again, had I known my natural inclination, I'd been more self-aware, I would have known that what I truly is in my zone of genius is the entrepreneurial role. So once I had enough employees, once my business ran really well, I got very bored. Now, for some of you guys, that sounds bananas. Why would you be bored if your business is running well? If you're making money and you don't have to do much because you have groomers, you have a receptionist, things are automated, um, you know, the, the branding is done, all of that is done. I was getting bored in my business because running the day to day started to really feel for me like a rat in a wheel. I am the kind of person that is always going to be looking for the next adventure, the next mountain to climb. And that is what classic entrepreneurs tend to feel. They tend to feel like they're always trying to find the next big thing. And that can be really toxic. You get a people that are, you know, if you guys have, you might know that business owner that has all these great ideas and they're trying to implement them, but they don't make sense. You know, like I was really excited and happy when I had my salon that ran well and I'm like, okay, now what can I do? And so we had a membership and that ran fantastic. But then when that started running fantastic and my employees were taught how to sell and it was selling like hotcakes, it's like, okay, now what? And that's when I realized that it just wasn't for me because for me, that one shop and at that point in my life, and again, even now, in different seasons of your life, you're going to want to do different things. At that point in my life, and even right now, I have no interest in owning multiple locations or having a multi-van business. I'm just not there at this point in my life. Um, I, you know, as you guys know, I want to get married and have more kids. And running that large of a business, I would really love to do that after my kids are grown. And to me, that would be the best option. Um, and again, I'm really self-aware that I know that. But there are plenty of people that, you know, may not feel that way. And I know I didn't feel that way till after I had my son. And a lot of that was because I had to miss out a lot of time because I, I opened up my grooming salon four days before he was born. And unfortunately, that's just how it works sometimes is that you have to sacrifice time with family to grow a business. Anyone who tells you you can open a business working 20 hours a week is a liar. Don't listen to them. You will work 40 to 80 hours a week in a business unless if you have a ton of money and a rich husband or a rich you know, daddy who's gonna pay for all of that, or maybe you have money. You could have a million dollars to sit there and just dump into your business and then you don't have to work 40 to 80 hours. But most of us just don't and so we have to 
you know, put some sweat equity into there where we're going to work hard and we're going to make that money by doing that. Now, knowing that I'm an entrepreneur and again, I can be the technician. I'm never going to be an artist. I wish I could be. I really wanted to do grooming competitions. As you guys know, I'm very competitive. I really wanted that. I got a standard poodle. I had some of the skills. I knew I could train it. And I just don't have the heart or the passion for it. Which, you know, is kind of depressing because I like the competition. I wish I had that. But I don't. And I like me and I accept me. And I accept that that'll never be me. I'm cool with it. I wasn't at first because otherwise I wouldn't have got a standard poodle. Um, you know, nothing like, you know, doing bath and blow dries and all that on a dog that you're like, God damn it, this is so much work. You know, and the same thing with my cat. Like, I know I wouldn't want to go and get a show Persian who, for those of you guys who have never dealt with show Persians, needs a bath and a blow dry about three times a week. And it's going to take you two hours to do that. You know, that is not where I am in my life, nor is that my personality style. So I go, okay, out of these three, where am I really? And if you guys want, I can always send you guys to the Tony Web, uh, Robbins website and you guys can actually take a test to find out which of these roles you naturally lean towards. Now, in your business, you're going to be all three until either you can outsource it, hire for it, or automate it. You know, in my business right now, I have employees. So I am a little bit of a manager, but because most of my stuff is automated, I don't have to manage my employees all that much. They know exactly what to do. They have, you know, an SOP manual. They, if they have a question, I'm there. But for the most part, I'm not handholding like I was in my shop. It's a different business model. It's set up different. It's set up for where I am in my life right now in my personality. And that's very important. But I just want to go through some quick uh, questions. And again, I'm going right to the Tony Robbins site. So here's how to help if you are a artist, a manager, or an entrepreneur. Here are some questions. I would rather A, brainstorm new branding, packaging, and designs. B, pursue a strategic partnership to build my business. Or C, structure a training session for my leadership team. Now these are obviously not super relevant to the grooming industry, but it's a good question. Would you rather pursue strategic partnerships that build your business? Would you rather be networking with other groomers? Would you rather be training your team? Or would you rather be brainstorming some new ideas? Like, you know, it says branding and packaging, but maybe that is, you know, other products you could be doing. You know, another question is, am I passionate about transforming an idea into a new product or service? B, expanding and growing my business with new game-changing strategies? Or C, running a business that's well-oiled with clear systems and protocol? And again, all three of these, you could be any of the three. Which one do you naturally lean towards? Here's another question. If I could choose to only focus on one thing in my business, it would be A, leading a team of enthusiastic individuals to achieve a goal, B, giving myself space to produce the work that I'm most proud of, or C, selling the business that I'm in so I can start my next project. This question, or these, this question really is clear what it is that you prefer to, what role you prefer to be in a business. So if you could choose to only focus on one thing, if you, if you chose A, leading a team of enthusiastic individuals to achieve a goal, you're happiest being a manager. You want to lead your team. You want to grow your team. You want to help them achieve the goal, which in grooming is to have either the best haircut, have the biggest salon, uh, have the best reputation, whatever it is. That is the manager. If you're like, um, most people in this industry, you'll answer B, giving myself space to produce work that I'm most proud of. Most of the grooming industry is either artists or technicians. And the tough part is a lot of you guys own these businesses, 
but you're so stuck in your artist or you're so stuck in your technician, you are unable to step into your manager or step into your entrepreneur. And when you can't step into your entrepreneur and you can't step into your manager, then you can't grow your business. You're gonna own a job. You're not gonna own a business. That's a problem. Now, another problem is if you're like me and you picked C, selling the business that I'm in so I can start my next big project. You know, I'm really struggling with right now if I want to grow my grooming business um, or if I want to sell it. And the reason is because I love my I love my grooming business. It's fantastic, and as I hire people, I really enjoy it. Um, you know, I really miss it. You know, if I'm gonna let it go, like I miss my shop some days. But I know if my heart is in being an entrepreneur, then I either need to grow and move into my next business um, and sell that one, or put a manager in place that I can trust to run the day-to-day -day of my grooming business. Um, that's also why I personally really enjoy business coaching because my brain and my, I don't know, my skill set, like my, my passion really is the problem solver of other businesses. It's really fun to me when you go, I have this problem, how do I solve it? You know, there was a groomer recently, like she just, she's amazing. She's absolutely wonderful. And she's like, I have only these two options. And I said, what are you talking about? You have all of these options. It's like a rainbow of options. And she's like, wow, I feel so much better. And we really talked about not just within those options, there's even more options. And I was like, listen, when you're ready to decide what it is that you want to do, then, you know, sign up for my monthly coaching because she paid for one strategy call. And she, until she's ready to go on to start those changes, that one strategy call was a good investment for her because it allowed her to have somebody who's really good. I know my personal skill set is, no, is when I learn about you, I learn about what makes you tick and what makes you happy, your why. That's more important than anyone talks about. If you don't know why you're doing this, you're going to eventually get burnt out. I'm sorry, like if you don't know why you get up every day to grow the grooming shop, to groom dogs for this amount of money, you know, you're just gonna burn out because there's nothing more. People feel better with progress. You need to know what goal you're reaching. So here's the thing is that when you know what you want, your why, and how you're built, if you know if you're an artist, a technician, or if you find out that you'd be happier as a manager or an entrepreneur, you allow yourself to stretch into what's gonna make you happy long-term. If you are an artist, you're gonna be really miserable working in a high volume shop like I owned. You'll be miserable because it wasn't our brand. What an artist would do really well in is a mobile, a single mobile, or a one-on-one -on -one shop where they do dog start to finish. They're gonna be a lot happier that way, or they're gonna be really happy working for somebody who really appreciates that sort of skill set, and their customers appreciate it. You know, if you're a technician like I was, you know, it's hard for you to make money because if you just wanna do five strips, you're probably gonna be stuck. So when you own your business, you need to find a niche that allows you to charge more, whether that's holistic, whether that is mobile, whether that is, you know, getting your CFMG, becoming cat exclusive. And if you enjoy managing and you wanna own your business, then you need to figure out who is going to be your person who's gonna think outside the box. If you're a naturally a manager, hire a business coach. It doesn't have to be me. Let them think about climbing the next mountain in your business. Say to them, hey, I wanna make more money. How do I do that? Your business coach is gonna go through what you want and, and do all of that thought process for you. And you know that allows you to focus on stop slowing down your grooming, if not stopping it, so you can manage your business and manage your employees and grow your employees. 
Now, if you're an entrepreneurial type like I am, it's time to decide what it is that you really want out of your business. Do you want a franchise? Do you want multiple locations? Do you want the giant do- daycare grooming boarding facility? What is your end goal? And that's gonna help you stay sane because a lot of us want these very large, that have entrepreneurial spirit. And I'm not talking about, I mean, all of us have an entrepreneurial spirit, but if you are built like an entrepreneur, you are always looking for the next big thing. It's just exciting, it's fun. Um, and that makes you learn really fast, but it makes you bored very fast. So you have to decide how you're gonna do that. Now, you may wanna do where you're building multiple locations, but in order to do that, you're gonna need the skill set and you're gonna need a well-oiled machine. You're gonna have to build those good employees who are gonna stay at that shop and build that shop with you because then you can go open the next shop and you can repeat that cycle or you can build up a shop and then sell it and then go open a new one, whatever it is that you wanna do. Or, you know, you there's so many options. I don't wanna go through it all because I don't, I you know, I, that's, that's a strategy call right there. There's so many options, trust me. But knowing how you're built is important because it's gonna, anything that is effortless makes you feel good. You know, it's great to achieve things, but when you're using that much willpower, it can get exhausting. If you are living your business day to day through pure willpower, that's burnout city. So I don't want you guys to do that. I want you guys to be happy. (laughs) Please be happy, you know, have some fun, enjoy your business. So again, just to reiterate the three roles, it is the artist or the technician, and I personally consider them two different ones. I do, I think that the artist and the technician, even though they're doing the same job, do them very different. The manager, the manager's job is to make sure things are running well. And then the entrepreneur, their goal is to I figure out, that. whoop, that's, that's my phone, is to do the next thing. You know, guys, like that's a lot of fun, but only if that's what actually makes you happy. If it doesn't make you happy, it's gonna make you miserable. But guess what? If you're an artist, there's options. If you're a technician, there's options. If you're a manager, there's options. There are always options, guys. So I wanna thank you guys so much. Go ahead and post any questions you have now in the YouTube chat box. I'm sorry if you guys are watching via Facebook. I appreciate you watching. If you're on Facebook, I actually can't see your messages till I get back in the group and I will be back in the group for about an hour after this live, which I'm a big, you know, I love that. I love that I can stream it there. Um, That way you guys can just, you know, hop on as you need to. But if you're on YouTube and you have any questions, go ahead and post them in the chat box right now. Um, I wanna welcome you guys too while I am, I'm gonna go through my sales pitch because y'all know, it is what it is. Listen. It's so funny because someone was like, oh, you always do your sales pitch on your YouTube show. I'm like, well, yeah, because I want you, I do this for free to help you guys. I want to help you guys. But if somebody wants more help than the help they're getting on YouTube for free, I have options. And I think that it's more important to me that you guys know what is available to you. So I'm going to speaking as you know how the hell that happened i don't know man anyway so i'm going to be speaking at the uh, it's online it's called the bad act cat conference say that 10 times fast uh it's going to be from august 30th to september 1st what i am going to be talking about is i have two classes which is find your zone of genius which i think is so important and it is also um uh, how to start running your business on autopilot Now, I have a lot of tips and tricks up my sleeve that I'm gonna be discussing in this. There's also a, not just cat grooming, but I love that if you guys are interested in cat grooming, Sarah Warner from Australia is gonna be doing a cat bath uh, demo and explain. And let me tell you, that woman is a cat grooming ninja. I don't know about if you guys know at all. So I'm a slow groomer. I can groom probably five to six cats a day. She by herself in her salon can do 10 to 15. 
which is bananas. Um, she actually does. She's in and she's in Brisbane, Australia. She actually has you know personalized instruction, and a lot of people will actually plan their Australian vacation around going to learn from her, which is amazing. Because I don't know about you guys, you know, I live in the U.S. I would love a tax write-off Australian vacation. I mean, that to me is the best of both worlds. I've always wanted to go to Australia. When COVID is done, I want to go to Australia. And if I can write it off as a business expense, even better. Like I said, Melissa Hall will be there and she's going to be speaking all about employees. And so if you guys are thinking about starting hiring, her seminar is going to be amazing. Now I'm going to be hoping to do some things with her in the future for Savvy Groomer. But if you want to jumpstart, I would do that now. And I'm going to go ahead and post in the chat box uh, that you can you know, sign up for that conference. Now, I don't get anything if you sign up for that conference. I get paid to be a speaker, but I think that there is so much value in it. And considering how cheap it is, a lot of these conferences have been so expensive. Um, and I have no problems with that. But it's just one of those things that, you know, if you want a good you know, investment. I think that is one of the best investments there. Um, oof, lose my voice. Um, as always, guys, there are three main ways to work with me. That is the one-on-one -on -one coaching. I always suggest the monthly, which is $9.97 a month. That gives you four coaching sessions a month. That is up to you to schedule. And what's really nice about that is that I would either do two a week for, you know, or one once a week. Um, I find that if you want a lot of change and you need a cheerleader and you need someone to help you think outside the box, it's nine times out of 10, it's not the actual physical doing problems that you guys have. It is the mental, you know, strength because you're using that willpower to change habits or change something in your business and having somebody who can either pivot and change because sometimes, you know, what you're starting to change may not actually fit and we need to pivot and think outside the box. So there's one-on-one -on -one coaching for you guys that are ready to sign up for personal financial leash. Please do. It is only one. It's one ninety nine for three months, and that will teach you in twelve weeks how to get your finances under control. I cannot tell you how important it is to have your personal finances under control. There is no point in paying for coaching if you don't know where your money is going. Good, bad, or indifferent. When you guys embezzle from your business, you are taking the freedom and the possibilities out of your business. So personal finance really teaches you how to actually live within your means, think about retirement, get your credit score under control, all of that good stuff. Now, if you're looking for some more in-depth teaching on how to you know, do some business, and again, I say do some business because I'm sitting here going, man, that's like a wide berth, you know, Grow Wealthy Grooming is my online membership. It is $35 a month. Each month you get an hour, about an hour long training with a workbook and that will, it's always one business coaching, not coaching, you know, business uh, session where we talk about something in business, whether that is to have personal growth, financial growth, or growth in your actual business. That is at such a great deal. Um, and, you know, and we do offer, if you guys don't want the monthly for Grow Wealthy Grooming, you can now buy the individual classes for 47. But to me, I would rather have an access to the entire library for 35 a month versus getting one product for the $47 a month. So, whew. oh, yes, don't forget. If you guys want to network with other savvy pet professionals, please do in my free Facebook group. I would love to see you guys there. I have way more things on my plate, but once they get off my plate, I'm gonna be doing a lot more, um, you know, social media stuff. I have been working on all of that, and you know, I think we're, I think we're getting better. I mean, you, you guys gotta admit, like this is, this little setup's getting better. My, you know, online presence getting better. And, you know, it's, it's wonderful. You know, we're all getting there, you know, we're getting there. Um, Percocha Styles is Ladine is saying it works and it's totally worth it. Follow the principles she teaches. She really does help you gain financial freedom that allows you to grow your business the way you want. Thank you, Ladine. That makes me so happy. 
Um, I'm really happy that I created this course. You know, as you guys know, I'm a Dave Ramsey financial coach. And as much as I love Dave Ramsey's principles, personally as a groomer, living on rice and beans is not an option for me. Um, I'm a really unhappy person if I'm not having Starbucks. And for me, if I'm grooming all day, if I'm, if I'm shaving cat butts all day, I need some happiness. You know, I need a little bit of happiness. So, you know, personal finance leash is designed for groomers because too many of us have, you know, been just glided over, you know, a lot of the principles, like I said, I love Dave Ramsey, but a lot of them just don't work because I don't know about you, I can't live on nothing and have no fun for two or three years. I'd go crazy. Um, again, my job's too hard. My job is too hard. My job is too physical for me to go through that. So thank you guys. I know I went over a little bit today. Thank you guys so much for being here. I am really loving everything that's happening. And if you guys need me, you know where to find me. Find me on Facebook. Um, don't bother me on Instagram. I got to work on that. That's on my list. Um, you know, mainly Facebook. You know, I am creating more stuff for the website. Again, I'm a one woman show. I also am a full time groomer. We're all working on this, right? It's all a work in progress. And I really appreciate you guys being here and uh, having fun with this journey. I'm having so much fun. Um, I'm really loving watching everyone grow their business and I really love being a part of, you know, my coaching clients, letting me watch their business grow. I love my Grow Wealthy grooming members who let me use them as a guinea pig to find out what business ideas they need from me so that I can help them. And Personal Finance Leash allows me, I mean, I have one groomer pay off $14,000 in 12 weeks, you know, in debt and I love watching people's lives get better. It, it really fills me up. It makes everything worth it. All right, guys, take it easy, and I will see you soon. Happy grooming.